In this video, we're going to be discussing why engines overheat, how your cooling system operates, and some basic troubleshooting. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Dave channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing why do engines overheat. Now, I'm a diesel mechanic, but the cooling systems, whether it's a diesel engine or a gasoline engine, whether it's in a truck, a bus, or a car, or a motorcycle, as long as it's a liquid-cooled cooling system, functions basically the same. And there's a lot of misconceptions as to why an engine will overheat, and we're going to be focusing on the cooling system side. Now, your engine itself can contribute to an overheat if you have a plugged exhaust system, plugged intake system, your timing is too advanced, too retarded, blown head gasket, cracked cylinder head. There's a multitude of reasons that could cause an overheat from the engine or contribute to one, but it would take hours to explain all the different reasons for that. So we're going to focus on the cooling system in this video. So let's get into the video. So let's do a quick definition of what an overheat actually is. An overheat is where an accumulation of heat in your cooling system is increasing faster than the cooling system can remove heat from the engine. And it gets to a point where the temperature of your cooling system will be above or whatever it will be above whatever the spec the manufacturer has for that engine. And most overheats are going to occur around between 220 and 240 degrees, and it really depends on what the manufacturer says is a true overheat. So why would something overheat, and what kind of damage can it do? Now, what can this do damage-wise to your engine? Well, it can crack a cylinder head. It can blow a head gasket out. It can cause leaks in your hoses. It can blow out seals. It can damage your cylinders. It can basically ruin your engine. So not overheating your engine is very critical now let's do a little thought experiment here because liquid cooled cooling systems use coolant which is anymore it's a 50 50 mix of either ethylene or propylene glycol a bunch of additives that are mostly rust inhibitors and then distilled water so let's do our little thought experiment here let's say you have a frying pan like the one on the left that is around 300 degrees the pot on the right is boiling water at about 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade, and the oven has 450 degree air in it. If you had to put your hand inside or onto one of these items for five seconds, which one would you pick? I know which one I would pick. I would much rather put my hand in the oven for five seconds than onto the steel skillet or into the boiling water, even though the air is much hotter than the other two items. And the reason for this is air is a very poor conductor of heat energy. So even though it's hotter, it would not be able to transmit the heat into your hand much quicker. And the reason this is important is you have to understand that you do not want air forming in your cooling system because it is a poor conductor of heat energy. Pure water, of course, boils around 212 degrees at sea level. So... It would start to boil if you're running pure water in any environment that's about that temperature. So what the coolant does is since half of your cooling system is water and the other half is coolant, the coolant is a chemical, propylene or ethylene glycol, that has a higher boiling point than water. So it'll take your boiling point up, let's say to about 225 degrees, just by running a 50-50 mix of coolant to water. Now, the coolant that encases your cylinders and your cylinder head can still get hotter than 225 degrees, especially as it's flowing around these hot metal components. So what's another way that manufacturers have created to keep the coolant from starting to boil? Because remember, we don't want air in this system. Well, the other thing they've done is they've kept it pressurized. Your radiator cap isn't just a fill port. It's also a very important item in your cooling system because it maintains pressure in your cooling system. All radiator caps are going to have a pressure number, typically in PSI, labeled on them. And the reason for this is every pound per square inch of pressure you put on the cooling system, it increases the boiling point. So the higher the pressure in the cooling system, 
the less likelihood of it starting to boil over, or at least the higher the temperature that the liquid has to get before it starts to boil. So now that you understand the importance of your coolant and the ability of keeping it from boiling, what happens when something does overheat or, or a truck or a car gets brought in and they say, hey, my engine's overheating. What do I look for first? Now, it seems like if you go on any forums or if I ever talk to a customer, hey, my car overheated. I changed the thermostats and the water pump and it's still overheating. Well, your thermostat or your thermostats and your water pump are not usually the causes of an overheat unless you start your engine up and within 10 minutes it's overheating or it tends to overheat under very light loads at almost all the time. When I get a vehicle that is overheating, I typically am going to look at two things first, the radiator and the cooling system, the coolant itself and its, uh, its current state. Now the reason I look at these two items first is because typically when do most overheats occur? You are in a hot month, typically summer, and you're pulling a grade, a hill or a mountain, and slowly the temperature needle just starts climbing and climbing over time and your car can overheat. What's happening here is the cooling system is not an able to reduce the amount of heat that it's extracting from the engine through the radiator where it's pulling air across the fins in the radiator and then pulling the heat out of the coolant and then cycling back into the engine. So that tells me that typically either the coolant's not very good at exchanging heat energy anymore or the radiator itself is plugged externally or internally so how do you know if the condition of your coolant is bad well there's different tests you can do but much like oil coolant over time will break down and each manufacturer is going to have their own specific information as to how many years or how many miles of operation you should go between coolant changes if your engine's overheating or running hotter than normal and it hasn't had a coolant service in the last few years you might want to look at doing a flush and then putting new coolant in it. I've seen this fix a lot of overheats without having to change any hard metal components. Now, most of the overheats we get, it's the radiator. It's either plugged externally with oil, dirt, debris, or it's plugged internally, most likely due to poor coolant condition plugging the internal cores of the radiator. At that point, you would have to remove the radiator and have it cleaned out or replace it. And it's kind of hard to tell when a radiator needs replaced outside of if you can see that the cores are plugged internally or if they're just plugged externally, you can usually rinse them off or pressure wash them off. Now, if you remove the radiator, a radiator shop can remove the end housings and take a look at it and tell you what the condition of the radiator is. Now, another item that's very critical to your cooling system is the Fan. There's a cooling fan. Most cars are going to have an electric fan. Some are going to have a belt-driven fan. Some buses and RVs are going to have a hydraulic fan that's run either with a PTO or the power steering pump. And the fan's critical because it helps move a high volume of air across the engine, but also across the radiator to help pull heat out of your coolant. What about the water pump and the thermostat? People change these all the time, and they rarely need them, in my opinion. And the reason for this is the water pump merely flows coolant. If you're in normal driving, not overheating, the water pump is most likely fine. And if it's only on a steep hill under very hot conditions that your engine's overheating, you have a loss of heat problem not necessarily a flow problem most of the time the water pump can be checked to see if it's putting out enough volume or pressure under operating conditions but most of the time the water pump is not the actual cause of an overheat and the number one component that gets changed the most of is your thermostat now in my field mostly cat diesel engines Thermostats are rarely the cause of an overheat, mostly because most cats run more than one thermostat. And the thermostats tend to fail open. So this one is obviously broken. It's heavily corroded. And both of the thermostats were like this. This is out of a 7 liter cat. And the reason I knew the thermostats were bad, it's not because the engine was overheating. It's because the coolant would never rise above about 130 degrees. 
it was always cold and I knew that the thermostats were most likely in an open state all the time and this was allowing the engine not to reach proper operating temperatures. Now if you suspect your thermostats are bad, do you really need to change them? Can't you just run the engine without them? You can, but running your engine under normal operating temperature around 200 degrees Fahrenheit is very bad for the engine. It can, re it can lead to excessive wear and really wear out your engine much sooner than it should wear out. Now there's one more component that I talked about quickly, but I didn't really address if it can cause an overheat, and most people forget about it, and that's your radiator cap. I already talked about the importance of keeping pressure in your cooling system to make sure that the coolant is not boiling below a temperature that it should be, and that's your radiator cap. The radiator cap is probably the cheapest component and the easiest to change on your engine, and a lot of the times they're not working properly. The radiator cap can actually be tested to see if it'll hold pressure properly. It also has typically one or two seals on it that need to be in good condition because if the cooling system's not holding pressure and you're starting to get boiling around the cylinder walls and in your cylinder head, that's going to start pushing air into the cooling system. And as we already know, air is a very bad conductor of heat energy. So if, let's say you have a clean radiator, Water pump seems to be working fine. Your fan's coming on. You might want to take a look at that radiator cap. You know, a $10 part might be causing all your troubles all along. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where I talk about why engines overheat, the damage it can cause to your engines, and how the components work in your cooling system. We're going to do a little segment now I like to call... So what you're looking at here is a cam lobe. This truck came in with an engine miss and they thought it was an injector. Well, sure wasn't an injector. The roller had worn right through the cam lobe all the way to the base circle. And so it was not lifting any of the valves on that cylinder. I believe these are the exhaust valves. This is the roller you're looking at. It just wore right through it, the housing and the bushing. Thought you'd enjoy it. Thanks for watching.